everyone back again uh, with another video showing some stuff again and uh, kind of surprised by the, the amount of stuff I have so I'll get into it some ungraded stuff real quick pick it up a little bit of Chauncey Billups so I've got a nice uh, Bowman's Best Refractor from uh, 97 his rookie year the EX it's like 2001 from his rookie year Stadium Club then uh, a Michael Jordan Ultra Michael Jordan Upper Deck you know, these really are, maybe this one is word grade worthy, but uh, this is not stuff that I would probably send in. And then uh, just a uh, Hoops Alonzo Morning rookie with a, with kind of a mangled corner there. Pick those up on the cheap. A couple other cards I picked up raw. This uh, Kinetics Grant Hill. And then the, uh, this is a 1998 Flair Showcase Row Zero, Isaac Bruce. Really, I mean, I just think I pay like a two bucks for this raw, uh, two thousand. So it's a it's a higher print on the row zero. They go up to two thousand. A uh, lower tier would be uh, two hundred and fifty. Of course, you've got the legacies, which are to a hundred from ninety eight. But uh, just a cool card, nice shine on that. Looking at some graded stuff. Uh, started off here with this Chris Hinton. So my strategy when I'm picking up graded cards now, I'm looking for stuff anywhere between the uh, the ten to twenty dollar price point. I think especially with uh, with what the future of of the cost of grading will be. You know, I don't I don't think PSA will maybe ever go back to you know getting giving you a uh, eight dollars for a card. So I've been picking up value buys when I can. I'm not looking at high end stuff, just stuff that I wanted to add to the collection. While I still can, because I don't know, I'll never send in cards to PSA to get them graded. So this Chris Hinton, uh, several times Pro Bowl pull player, uh, significant because he was uh, the number one draft pick of the Denver Broncos, which ultimately he got traded um, from the Broncos to the Colts because of uh, John Elway refusing to sign with the Colts. So there's a little bit of history behind this card. So thought I'd pick it up. And then uh, Flair Showcase Tony Gonzalez rookie card. Uh, this is the row two. Uh, a near mint seven, so not. I'm not so sure. It's probably some scratching on the surface that I can't see. Card looks very good, outstanding eye appeal. Does does not look like a seven to me. But I bundled that with quite a few other cards, including that the previous. Um, this was the biggest card of the lot that I purchased. Uh, I, this is I want to say about forty three, forty four bucks, but it is the SP Authentic Future Watch of Fred Taylor. Uh, thousand, ten thousand yard career back, not in the Hall of Fame, but a really good career, and uh, numbered out of two thousand on that. That's a pretty popular card for the likes of Peyton Manning, Randy Moss, and Charles Woodson, the three Hall of Famers from that class. But we'll see what happens with Fred Taylor. Like I said, not a Hall of Famer, but you never know. This guy is a Hall of Famer, Edron James, his gold prestige uh, playoff rookie. Uh, serial number two five hundred. You want to pay around sixteen dollars. So once again, not a uh, not a big ticket item, but a really cool, nice shine. Uh, obviously less desirable in that Miami uniform, but still a cool uh, addition to the uh, Le Edwin James PC. All right. So uh, looking at this, uh, some SGC graded cards. I remember opening packs eighty eight tops as a kid. Never did pull this Montana, but I love that shot of Joe. Uh, getting ready to to complete a pass, probably just warming up, and um, yeah, good memories of that. Uh, on these, I'm going to show you several 88 tops. I paid uh, right around the cost that would even have to get them grade. So this Jerry Rice in the mid nine, I want it for nine nine dollars ninety nine cents combined shipping on it. So essentially, uh, basically paying ten bucks, and that's what it costs to get these things slabbed. At least that's what it cost to get them slapped a little while ago. Who knows nowadays, but uh, I had that card as a kid. Oh, I want to say about a little, maybe a year ago I picked up uh, the Bo Jackson rookie. And so there's another card in the 88 set, this one right here. It shows him in action. I kind of like this one better, although uh, I do like his uh, future star rookie from the 88 Tops football set. So here it is, uh, Jackson all alone. Pretty cool in-action card from the 88 uh, Tops football set. And then one basketball card here, this scoreboard uh, checklist. This is about as low tier as it gets for Kobe Bryant rookie cards. Uh, this may be at the bottom of the foods, food uh, 
food order, if you would. But uh, cool, got it in an 8.5. I think I paid like $13 for it. So like, you're just not going to get Kobe rookies for $13 anymore. And as I said before, I bundled it with uh, several other cards in auction to uh, to get a good deal on shipping too. That's another trick that I've been doing. All right, so I've got uh, four of these right here. Talking about bundling. So uh, a seller had two of these uh, in near mint eights. They were better centered than the ones I have here. But uh, they went, I think I bid like $50 and I got outbid. And they ended up going for 50 something dollars. So I saw he had another auction for four of them. So I uh, I bid, obviously I, I wasn't ready to pay more than the 20, you know, $20, $22 a card. So I bid on them and I won them for about $76, $78, I want to say, with free shipping. So uh, all four of these, they look all kind of very similar. A little bit off-centered, uh, top to bottom, a little bit left to right too. They're clean cards. They just, uh, I don't know, some people might uh, might not like these just because they're registry because they do look off-center which isn't that uncommon for the 92 Fleer set. But uh, somebody must have just busted open a bunch of box 82 or 92 Fleer and just sent them all in. And uh, I'll take them off his hands, I guess. And, uh, another guy from that 92 class that uh, not a lot of people do collect, Alonzo Mourning, but a really good uh, really good center. And I think he did win a championship with the Heat, didn't he, back in, uh, was it 2006 when they had Dwayne Wade on there? Maybe I'm uh, Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that's the last basketball card. And uh, for my baseball fans, uh, stay tuned because uh, this next stack is all baseball. So starting with a uh, card from the Junk Wax era here, this 89 Don Ross Rookies Randy Johnson. Bundled this again with uh, with some of the other cards I've already shown. And I'm at nine. Uh, Randy Johnson is starting to see his cards raise in value, but they're still way undervalued for the uh, the career that he had. Like who in his era wanted to face Randy Johnson? He was the uh, he was a bad dude, and nobody wanted to put, put, to hit against him. Larry Walker, a mint nine. It's his rookie from uh, ninety tops. I think I won that one for about five bucks, but that was a steal. All right, uh, another pre-war card collection. I showed the other day my Diamond Heroes cards, and this one's kind of hard to see. Maybe I'll put it in the light a little bit better. You can see that hopefully. Uh, in a mint nine, these are very tough to grade because they chip really easy with that uh, that etching. But really cool artistry on that, and that Diamond Hero set kind of plays off the comic book theme. So there's the uh, Frank Thomas. All right, this is a really one of the coolest cards of the lot. This is a '98 Topps Flashback King Griffey Jr. It is a rare insert, uh, one in every 72 packs. And I'm not a big like, oh, I got to check the pop. I didn't even check the pop when I bid on this. I want it for around 20 bucks. So kind of at the the high end of the spectrum where I'm looking to pick up things. And uh, I didn't even look at the back. Uh, boom, right there. That thing is gorgeous. It's foil on either side, which makes it extremely difficult to grade. Uh, beside the fact that it's an extremely rare and tough pull. So uh, I just recently, like a few minutes ago, checked the pop report to see how many of these are even uh, in the registry. There's uh, eight total, I believe. Two tens, one nine, a couple eights, and maybe a seven. So a really low pop count on this. Uh, I'm, there's got to be some Griffey collectors out there who who maybe are, are still in pursuit of this. I can't believe I was able to win it uh, for a $20 bill. All right, another guy now uh, as we continue the theme of some of the greats of baseball who are kind of under the radar. I think kind of Derek Jeter might be that guy. He's kind of under the radar in a sense that... Uh, you know, he's already been uh, elected to the Hall of Fame. He's several years removed from his playing days. All the hype seems to be around the new guys or the folks that are just about ready to get ready for the Hall. And he's kind of overlooked. So I've been picking up Jeter's, like I said, in that uh, his price points may be like 12 to to $18 price point. So I've got some cool cards. Double-sided, uh, Topps Finest. This came, I think, one in every 23 packs of 98 Finest. Then we've got some of the uh, 99 Flare Brilliance action. This came out, uh, the blue version, uh, which is one in every three packs, was blue. So that's a really cool, shiny card. Here's just the base uh, 99 Ionix. Here's the base uh, 99 Tops Stars. 
Got a little bit of run on this 99 top stars. So that was the base. Then you could get the one star. So the one star was a, uh, a parallel um, version of it that um, was like two of these for every pack. So not, not definitely not a rare variation or rare parallel. And then uh, I didn't get the two star. Someone else bid me on that, but I did have a three star. And like I said, these are in very nice condition. All mint nines. Uh, this one's got a little bit of shine to it on the three star. A little tougher pull on the three star. But you can see as you get to the higher parallel, the uh, the picture zooms in on Derek Jeter. And then the last from the tops, Star Galaxy. This is actually the Galaxy card. Uh, once again, I didn't even realize that, like, uh, that this card was a pretty rare pull. I think it's like one every 52 packs or so. And it's serial number two, 1,999. The, uh, the year. So really cool. Uh, galaxy card from Derek Jeter. Okay, you're in on that Jared Jeter theme. This upper deck black diamond, just a single variation, but uh, a cool card, very difficult foil card to uh, to master. Uh, this ultimate competitors from uh, Ultimate Victory, a tough pull, one in every 23 packs. It's a little bit rarer, and uh, get it in a nice mint nine is tough as well with that foil boy, tough card. But uh, that was a cool one. Oops. All right, here we go. This 99 Upper Deck MVP, the Swing Time. I bought this without even really being able to get a good look at the card because uh, it was it's kind of like maybe here with the light reflecting on it, you can see a little better of it. But uh, it's a pretty cool card. Uh, it definitely looks better in hand than it did when I purchased it. And then uh, a private stock. And once again, bundled, bundled almost all of these cards together to uh, to worry about combined shipping and, and cut down on cost. Uh, I don't have a lot of Derek Jeter, and I just think, you know, man, what can I buy that I enjoy, that I won't break the bank, and that, hey, if, even if the market uh, dips again or has some uh, hiccups, that these cards will keep their value. And like I said, the end of the day, will you ever go be able to go back to PSA and get a, get a slab, anything slab for $10? I, I doubt it. So to buy these cards uh, at the price point of picking them up, you know, $15, $18, $17 here or there, I don't see how you can go wrong. And uh, I love slab cards, so as you can tell from my collection, a really cool insert. I think this is like one in 23 packs from SP. No, maybe it's uh, not that rare, but it's SPX, which is a, a kind of a premium product, 2001. You can see it's the first appearance that I've seen of his uh, Jordan cleats there he was wearing some other brands before in the other cards uh 2002 tops total joe mauer is the last card i'm going to show i just picked this up at random i bundled it with some of the other cards you've seen and my first joe mauer and uh that is it everyone once again appreciate the posts and comments and i'll talk to you again soon